Are you the type of person that looks for their wallet at the counter or you're the type that gets your money or card ready so as not to waste anybody's time, including your own? Story, story, you say story. Once upon a time, you say time, time. Welcome to my channel once again. It's Lara DG, always and forever. It's not really a story time today. However, it's freestyle week and I wanted to talk about the part two of a video um, I did last year where I, where I talked about some etiquette issues, including road rage, parking lot, and discipline. I'll link that video below in the description box below and also at the end of this one. I decided to do this one because, you know, we're losing simple etiquette rules and regulations and because I'm the public official and the self-appointed people's voice on these topics, here we go. So, A. Should you be too relaxed as a passenger while someone else is driving you? Hmm? Who should be the tired one, the driver or the passenger? I've had a lot of experience driving for fun and also during my mini adventures on those, you know, on those days where, you know, I was out of college. So um, I've learned what to do and, you know, what not to do as a driver and what's expected as a passenger because I've been both in many different um, situations. So number one, should you be sleeping when someone else is driving? I drove a lot when I was in college, you know, when I had a Toyota Forona, it's a truck, kind of like a truck. And uh, my dad gave me this truck when the small car I was using stopped working out of the blue. I drove the car to basically to school, to work and to church, but I also took it out on mini adventures. And I do remember that on those adventures, most times I would have company within the state or out of state. You know and on the way home hmm, i'll be the only one still up driving in the middle of the night no one to talk to right just a truck or sometimes it's a bus full of sleeping people and i was thinking you know i would like to have a witness god forbid if anything happens but if everybody is sleeping no one would know what you know what really happened number two should you be eating when you know the person driving is hungry as well as a driver, you know you can't be multitasking at the wheel. Eating is one of them. So, out of respect for the driver, whoever it is, I won't eat unless we eat together. Even if as a passenger I'm eating while someone is driving, I'll feel so uncomfortable knowing the other person is equally as hungry as I am. I'll just wait or maybe we'll just stop at at the gas station or something and we'll, you know, we can all eat together. The third one, should you be complaining? As a passenger hmm driving for more than 35 minutes is a drive so if there are more people in the car adults I mean not kids because you know they'll just complain from the beginning to the end of the ride usually when I'm the one driving for more than an hour you know for more than 30 minutes to an hour I don't want to hear any complaints you're not the one driving because driving is very tiresome and when you have complaining passengers it makes it even worse so cheer up whenever someone is driving you and make it engaging enough for the driver, you know, so that they're happy to do the job, but not to the point of, you know, distracting the driver. You know what I mean? Um, so the B of the topic that we're talking about today is, should you be disciplined in the way you walk in public? Unfortunately, hmm, America is growing backwards, I feel, and we need to be talking about this. I'm kind of ashamed at how people walk in public. Let me explain. There is an art to how you present yourself in public, right? The way we walk, the way we talk, the way our extremities move around our body and the way we comport ourselves. It puts an image of how people will see us as a whole because that's what they're going to see first, right? Coming from Nigeria, we were taught, we were taught to dress smart and be sharp. Our movements should also match that. So the three things I'll talk about, number one, Pick up your feet when you're walking. That's the first thing we learned. Stop dragging your feet. We were taught this when we were back home. Um, you see, dragging your feet is likened to a lazy person, a tired person, or even a jobless person. You know, you're dragging your feet on the floor. What does that say about you? If you're working as a professional, take for instance, a police officer, a security officer, a nurse, a firefighter, a waiter even. You know, would you be dragging your feet when you're doing these jobs? 
these are jobs where you need to be on your feet for an amount of time and if you're seen walking as a zombie dragging your feet that will not speak well of you you know what i'm saying number two picture where you're going and don't stop till you get there let's repeat that if you think about where you're going before you even get out of the house right then you save your time energy money and your gas even in life in general it's good to have goals about where you want to go where you want to be in a year or maybe five to ten years down the line and when you have these goals figured out you know you can map out how you want to get there take for instance I want to have my bachelor degree in four years then you would want to map out you know what major you want to study what classes you want to take what books you need to buy how you're going to pay for this education and so on you know but without a plan wouldn't that be wasting your energy your resources and ultimately your precious time which you can't get back right so the third one the passageway is always wide enough one thing that irritates me the most is when I see people stopping in the middle of the passage or hallway to talk to, you know, to talk to friends, to talk to, it's, it's very rude to the people behind you. I experienced this when I was in high school and it irritated me, still does, okay, a lot. You know, it's very rude to the people behind you. Why don't you just park yourself to the side? You know, just like when you're driving, it's rude to just stop in the middle of the road and be talk to, talking to, you know, other people while having no regard for the people coming behind you. It would be very disrespectful. It would be, actually, it would be respectful for you to park your car, you know, first to the side of the road, you know, and then you can carry on with your conversation, not blocking everybody else. Your invisible antenna, antenna should be, Picking up signals and energy from the people around you because, you know, you want to be proactive in the way you live your life, right? So the last one would be, uh, the last topic will be, uh, let's say shopping, right? Should you be talking on your phone at the shopping counter? You know, you've bought all your goods and you're ready to pay and now you're on the phone, you know, doing random things. I remember um when the phones were coming out right i was just starting out in college and was getting used to living here in the state you know with working balancing home life and going to school you know when shopping back then there were no distractions even if there was any you know it was very minimal i think the most you probably have was the bluetooth earphones and that's just one ear at least you can still hear with the other one right but now phones are everywhere it is in our children's hands, it is in adult hands, it's in our pockets, we are touching it, we are always on it, but when we go out shopping, one thing we should refrain from is having the phone out when we are ordering or maybe you're paying for, for your goods. It's very distracting and it's very off-putting. So the first thing I'll talk about is the phones, the headset and the earpods. When you are at the counter with your earphones on, the message it conveys to everyone around you is that you're listening to music right that's what we see that's what we think the first time we see someone with earphones you think maybe they're listening to music or maybe they're talking to someone else or maybe you want to some people want to ignore talking to people but do you see how confusing this would seem when you are ready to order something at the counter or maybe you're ready to pay for your goods it's frustrating if i were on the other side on the opposite side of the counter and i put myself in the cashier's shoes i'll be very upset i've done it you've done it with you know being at the counter with our earphones on and with our you know airpods on it's let's let's stop it let's stop it it's not nice i'll be very irritated if i was on the other side of the counter you know i'll i'll be thinking that you're not focused and that you're not ready to be done with your shopping all right the second time is wasting time at the counter now are you the type of person that looks for their wallet at the counter or you're the type that gets your money or card ready so as not to waste anybody's time, including your own. I'm the type of person that tries that tries to think two to three steps ahead, depending on the situation, and I try to come up with different scenarios that could happen, right? Some will say that's nuts, but this is what I do sometimes. So I make sure I have my wallet and my cards or cash ready before I even get to the counter to pay. One of my fears is that I'll put some things in my car and I'll get to the 
counter and not have my wallet or money to pay. So I always make sure I have that ready. I would have wasted my precious time and that of others if I didn't make sure that was in check. So I make sure I don't waste people's time by being that person on the line. Hmm. If you've noticed that I talk about time a lot, you realize that a peaceful living has a time component attached to it. It requires that you take action immediately in certain situations without wasting time. Our time is limited here on earth and every minute that goes by cannot be brought or bought back. How will you spend your time? How have you wasted your time before and how did you fix the issue? I would definitely love to hear from you, uh, my awesome listeners. All right. So that's all for now, you guys. I'm a lover of peace and I love talking about situations we might find ourselves in that need peaceful endings. Let's stop giving ourselves high blood pressure for no reason as we live our lives. God willing, we are on this earth for an average of 75 to 80 years. Let's not wait, waste any of that precious time on matters that don't help us live positively in some way. You have a decision to make when these matters concern you. If not now, maybe later, the etiquette ball is in your cut. Thank you very much for spending your time with me. You can like this video by giving it a thumbs up so that I can make more videos on this section and also subscribe to get notified of newly posted videos from me. It's free. Just click the red subscribe button. Don't forget to love your neighbors as yourself. And at the end of the day, let us remember that for us to rest in peace, we all need to be living in peace. Stay blessed. And you'll see me in my next one.